It was widely reported that the Trump administration may block $250 million in military assistance to Ukraine as part of its overall efforts to curtail foreign aid. Mr. Trump began supplying weapons to Ukraine two years ago in its fight against Russian-backed separatists. The war there now is in its sixth year, with thousands dead and no signs of an end in sight, and with no U.S. troop presence anywhere near the front lines. Some American citizens have decided to go and fight anyway. From those front lines, special correspondent Simon Ostrovsky reports. Damian Rodriguez is an American citizen from the Bronx with a habit of fighting in wars that many would say are not his own. My passion is to volunteer for different militaries, militias, and help defend their land. In 2015, Damian traveled to Syria. The ISIS videos that were coming out, decapitating people, burning people alive, selling women. I felt I had to do something, and our government wasn't doing enough, and um, heard that people were out there helping and decided to go and help. He had no military experience. The only branch he'd served in was a bank branch in Delaware. He got dealt with uh, all the automated cash transactions, a lot of spreadsheets, <laughs> Excel. Not for me, I guess. Today, he's a long way from the spreadsheets, fighting an enemy even more formidable than ISIS or arithmetic, the Russian military. Last year, Damien joined the Marine Corps of Ukraine. We're in a trench on a hill that's overlooking some of the Russian-backed forces' positions. The reason Damien's unit's been sent here is because they're to provide covering fire for another Ukrainian unit that's hunting anti-tank crews that have been harassing Ukrainian vehicles lately. This machine gun nest overlooks the positions of the Russian military and their local separatist allies, who want to wrest control of eastern Ukraine from the central government in Kyiv. Go, 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 go. It's a war that's claimed the lives of some 13,000 people since 2014. And aside from the occasional foreign volunteer, Ukraine, which has regularly committed its troops to America's wars around the world, has had to wage this fight on its own. Well, almost. Damien came here, not just without the blessing of his government, but also without his families. He left his girlfriend and two sons behind in the United States. Yeah, that didn't go over too well. Uh, she was uh, extremely upset, couldn't understand why I would give up my family. She's seen it as giving up my family. Um, because, of course, there's a possibility of death. Extremely upset is putting it lightly. In the months leading up to his departure to Syria, Damien's ex sued him for withdrawing money from a joint account. And when he returned in 2017, he was arrested for missing thousands of dollars in child support payments. She kind of basically told me they want me out of the life and... At the time, I wasn't in a good state of mind. I had just came back from Syria and... Are you saying you lost custody of your son? Yeah. So the United States... The United States has spent one and a half billion dollars of military aid to Ukraine, but there are no boots on the ground. That one and a half billion goes to weapons, equipment, and training. The only American servicemen here are in a facility near the Polish border, over 800 miles west of the front lines. Like the Canadian and British soldiers who are also in Ukraine, they're providing training at a safe distance from the violence. There's hundreds of other Americans far away from the front lines in a much safer environment. What does it feel like to be one of the only ones actually on the front line in the only active war in Europe? last thing we need is another war. If you have more boots here, then that means Russia is going to have more boots over there. And, you know, do we really want this to be a huge, you know, possibly w world war, you know? One of his commanding officers tells us he's grateful for the fighters from the U.S., Great Britain, and Estonia that have joined this unit. How did you feel when the foreigners first joined your battalion? 
We know the reason why we are here, Ukrainians, because it's our land, we defend it. But why foreign guys come here? We didn't. These guys are very good guys. They are very patriotic. One of them want to take Ukrainian citizenship now because our uh, laws allow to do that. Following in the footsteps of the U.S., Ukraine changed its laws to make it possible for foreigners serving in the military to receive citizenship. Not everyone plans on taking it, but the Defense Ministry says there are currently about 130 foreigners serving, including several Americans. Someone who proves that he wants to be Ukrainian citizen and he also has the good record of fighting for this country, well, he also has the privilege to be granted Ukrainian citizens. The reforms are seen as part of an effort to redirect internationals away from volunteer battalions that were not fully under the Defense Ministry's control. Groups like the Azov Battalion, which has recruited many of its fighters from the ranks of the far right and has ties to organizations that participated in the 2017 white nationalist rally in Charlottesville. That's why you, you need somehow to regulate these volunteers or foreign fighters or whoever is fighting on your side. It was impossible to plan some military operations because volunteers never accepted your orders and they did their own military operations. So what about the equipment provided with U.S. tax dollars? Some of it has apparently filtered down to the troops. We were issued night vision and actually just used it last night. But there's a desperate shortage of one thing on these front lines, safe armored vehicles. In this sector, we saw none of the Humvees America handed over with much pomp at this ceremony in 2015. We were told there weren't enough to go around. Drones are another area where the Ukrainian military improvises, and Damien is his unit's pilot. So this video shows me actually using the drone as a weapon. Oh, whoa, there it goes. Yeah. And he runs right back into the dugout. We were targeting the vehicle. Uh, we had no clue who was in the vehicle. It just so happened to be one of the big commanders of, the, of that battalion, brigade. Anyone can order this quadrocopter from Amazon for around $1,500, but it has one deadly handmade modification. Just has a attachment here to drop bombs. Stuff this plastic explosives into the tube, set a detonator inside, and once it hits the detonator, it explodes. Get a bunch of nice little screws inside them. Should an American like you really be here fighting another country's war? Our government actually supports Ukraine very much so. I would never go against my country's wishes. As, uh, Syria was a bit on the line. And when I got back, guys from like Homeland Security and, you know, even FBI guys, I were like, oh, thank you very much, you know. <laughs> I share a room with another guy. This is my bed. Sorry for the mess. <laughs> for Damien, being out here on the front lines, despite the constant dangers, things somehow seem easier and more straightforward than the life he abandoned in the U.S. Uh, don't get me wrong. I love America. I love my home and my family. But um, Ukraine has grown on me, and uh, I really respect the people, especially the people here in the military. Few Americans have dared openly fight against Russia in its war in Ukraine. But if Kyiv continues welcoming foreign fighters, America and other Western countries may get more boots on the ground than they ever bargained for. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Simon Ostrovsky on the front lines in eastern Ukraine.